Today I'm going to explain a little bit about using the uh, spreadsheet price calculator that I've put into Google Sheets. I've made this spreadsheet available for anybody to use. You can use it, you can modify it. You cannot modify it on my Google Sheets page, but you can download it from Google Sheets and you can uh, modify it on your own page uh, or on your own computer as much as you want using Excel or Numbers or Open Office or any one of those uh, spreadsheet programs. And the spreadsheet looks like this. Uh, this one hasn't been updated in a little while, but um, uh, this is the basic spreadsheet. And what it allows you to do is put in numbers into these blue boxes. Okay, these boxes that are shaded blue. For your col colorblind people, I've, I've put together a colorblind version of this and I'll have to go in and update it. But um, anyway, these boxes are blue color and those are the only things that you should change on this spreadsheet in order for the calculations to continue to work as they should. So the first thing you do is you come along and you say, okay, you want to decide, first of all, what material are you using? You'll notice that these are drop-down menus that allow you to enter different values into these boxes. So if you're working with, uh, say, half-inch plate, you can change this value to half-inch plate, you could change this value to three-eighths of an inch, etc., and it would give you, uh, once you put in these numbers, it would give you the calculations based on the thickness of this plate. But what I'm doing uh, mostly is sheet metal. So I'm doing uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18 gauge is the way I have this spreadsheet set up at the moment. Once you choose the gauges uh, that you're working with, these are the dates where you can put in uh, the last time that you purchased your material. So if I purchased the material today on August 8th, and I bought a 14 gauge sheet of four by eight, and my price was $110, I would put that in here for this price. <clears throat> and say a four by eight sheet of 14 gauge cost me $110 on August 8th, 2020. Well, a four by eight sheet is 4,608 square inches. So when it does the math in the price per square inch, a four by eight sheet is 0 0.2, 0 0.024 or, or two and um, four tenths of one cent per square inch for that material. So once you put in your price here, it will calculate down here what your square inch price is. And you'll notice these are not blue. You should not change these numbers because they're done by calculations. But it says, okay, 0 0.024. So I would look at that number and say, that's the material I'm using. I would put that number right in here in this box. 14 gauge material. Okay. And 0.024 cents per square inch. So now we're looking at this 14 gauge column at 0.024 cents per square inch. And the next thing we need to do is fill in these numbers over here, which is the material square inches that you're going to be using to cut the piece, the number of pierces that you're going to do, and the number of inches of cut that you're going to do. So let's go ahead and look at that. We're gonna look at design edge. And for the moment, I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna cut this piece out of this sheet of material. Let's say that the badge has already been cut out, the dog has already been cut out, and I've got this material left over and it's got these three pieces to cut out, and I want to cut this, but I want to know what I'm going to charge for this piece. The way I'm going to do that <clears throat> is I'm going to take it and I'm going to copy it off to the side of the table. And the reason I'm going to copy it is because I don't want to mess up the nesting of the pattern on the material that I'm going to cut. Once I have this box over here, or once I have the shape over here, <clears throat> the first thing I would do is draw a box around it. And I'm gonna try and get that box as tight as I can because I'm trying to get an accurate measurement of how much material I'm using to cut that piece. 
I think that's a fair amount right there if I cut that out of there. But could I use less material if I rotated it? No, I don't think I could. Uh, not here. Well, let's see. If I took this and rotated it, uh, I don't think it would make a heck of a lot of difference. Really. Uh, let's see. Rotate it back again here a little bit. And I'll take this box and move it. down like that and what you're what you're basically trying to do is be fair to your customer you, you don't want to charge them for four square feet of material if you're only using two square feet of material to cut out the piece so I'm gonna call this box good enough for this it, it's a little little bit sloppy I probably could get tighter but for the sake of this video I'm gonna press F8 and it's gonna tell me that the area of that box is 250 square inches of material all right so I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet now, and I'm going to put in material square inches in this box. I'm going to put in 250. All right. And now I'm going to look at the number of pierces. We'll go back to Design Edge, and I'm going to take that box away, delete it. And I'm going to select the entire thing and press F8. And you'll notice that it says <clears throat> there are 29 closed paths and two open paths. Well, 29 plus 2 is 31. So going back into the spreadsheet, I will put 31 in this box. Okay. And then back in Design Edge again, I will look at the length. It's 215.3 inches of closed paths and 2.5 and inches of open paths. So 215, 16, 17, let's call it 218 inches of cutting. Just, just to round it up. <clears throat> I'm going to put it in the number 218 here. And you'll notice that in my 14 gauge column, because that's the material I'm going to cut it out of, priced at 0.024 cents per square inch, the target price of that is $56.10. Now, it's based on a couple of calculations. Uh, for instance, uh, there's no additional charges over here for cleaning, sandblasting, priming, painting, powder coating the surfaces. Those would be added in at this area here. And those charges, as you put them in, would be uh, added to the total. But I'm not doing any of that. I'm just, I'm just getting the price of cutting the metal out at the moment. So, my cost for the piece is $10.20. However, there's a shop overhead fee. You're going to have to turn the lights on. You're going to have to run the fans. You're going to have to uh, uh, pay property taxes or rent. You're going to have to replace your air compressor when it dies. You're going to have to buy new sanding discs and grinding wheels and maybe even new tools when they die. So with every piece that you make, there should be a shop overhead fee. And the overhead fee is just the standard fee you charge on every piece. And what it does is it covers all of those extraneous costs of having the shop and the tools and the machines to make this piece for this customer. And you say, well, I already have that stuff. I shouldn't charge the customer. Well, if it was going to last forever, you could. But it's not going to last forever. Um, your tools are going to break. Your consumables are going to wear out. You have the consumables on your plasma torch. You have um, the um, uh, other expenses of running your shop. You might have an alarm system on your shop. You have to pay a monthly fee for that to maintain that. Uh, whatever it happens to be, propane to heat the place, uh, water, um, you know, who knows. So I just add in a shop overhead fee of 50%, and that is, uh, that is set up up here in cell J4. I've got it set to 50%. That's a blue box. I could change that number. I could change it to 10% or 40% or whatever. But 50% seems to work out the best. It brings in enough money to maintain the shop and all of the tools and the machines as you're using them and as they wear out. So, okay, my cost for that piece is $10.20, 50% is $5.10 for the shop overhead fee, which means in this black bar, 
The total cost for me to produce this piece for this customer is $15.30. Now that's if I don't want to pay myself any money. That's if I don't want to make a profit, <clears throat> but I do. So this green bar here, the target price, is a multiple of five. If I click on this box, you'll see up here, it's currently set to five. You can set that to any number you want. You can set it to four, you can set it to two, 2.5, whatever you want. But I have it set to five, which means if the piece costs me $15.30 to make, I have to pay myself a salary. I've got to cover all my overhead costs. I've got to make a profit. <laughs> There's no sense in breaking even, you know, uh, you've got to make a profit. So what it calculates out to is $56.10 for this piece. And uh, I also have some numbers above and below that. If you wanted to give a 5% discount to your customer, then the price would be $53.30. And you've got to remember, these are just calculated numbers. So I could round this target price down to $55. I could round this small discount down to $52. A moderate discount of 10%, I could round it down to $50 or 49, whatever. This is just, this is just a guide to tell you basically what to charge. This isn't, uh, this isn't science. This is just a guide. And a 15% discount for a guy that comes every week and buys something from you, you might give him a 15% discount and charge him $45 or $47 for this piece instead of 56. Now a guy rolls up in a Rolls Royce and uh, you know he says, I want you to drop everything and make this right away. You can say, okay, sir, I'll do that. There's a 20% markup for an immediate, what's called a G job, which is instant gratification. It's an IG job. And you say, I'll make that piece for you. The price would normally be $56, but I'm going to make it for you for $68 because you want me to drop everything and make it. So there's a 20% markup. There's a 15% markup and a 10% markup. And this yellow one is a 5% markup over the, the factor of five multiplication over your costs. So that's what this spreadsheet does. It takes a number. And it, uh, it, it gives you a guideline of basically what you should charge. And that's based on what you paid over here for your material per square inch. I have 4 by 8 sheets, 4 by 10 sheets, and 5 by 10 sheets. Of course, if you're cutting it out of a 5 by 5, you're still paying a calculated cost of whatever it would be for that 5 by 10 sheet. So you'd have to put in these numbers and know what you're doing. Up here uh, in J2, I have a price per pierce, and I have three cents per pierce as a price. So this one has 31 pierces, which means I'm charging 93 cents just for the pierces of the material to make this plaque right here. And the reason I'm doing that is because, as you know, the more pierces that you have with your torch, the faster your consumables are going to be eaten away, and you're going to have to replace them. And those consumables for those hypertherm torches are not cheap. So my price per pierce, I've set it at three cents. I could set this at 0.35, you know, or I could set it at 0.32 or 0.41 or whatever I wanted to set it at. But that's a number. So I currently have it at three cents per pierce one and one half cents per inch of cut. That number can be raised or lowered. Let's see what it does to the price. We have a um, current price of 56.10 for that piece I calculated. Let's lower that price per cut to one cent. Per cut. And you'll notice it drops the price to $50 and 11 cents because I'm charging one cent per inch instead of one half, one and one half cents per inch. Remember it, it's 218 inches. Okay. So 218 inches at a, at a, at a penny per inch is $2 and 18 cents at 1 point, at 0 0.01.5. Your price jumps 
to 327 for the cutting. You see, one and a half cents per inch times 218 inches is three dollars and 27 cents for the plasma cutting. So it allows you to adjust what your material costs, what you think it costs you per pierce and per inch of cut, what your overhead costs should be. You might uh, you might say, well, you're gonna you're gonna charge 40 percent overhead or 30 30 percent for your customer. Uh, you can do that. But you're going to find out that as you're running your shop and you're and you're going through tools and consumables and whatnot, that 30% is not really going to cover what it's going to cost you to keep your shop alive. So I set my overhead cost at 50%, and that pays my salary, and that pays for all of the costs of keeping the shop going. Okay. Uh, down here in the cleaning sandblasting, these can be changed. You can change this category and you, you could make this gold plating if that's what you do. You could make this routing uh, or sanding. You could make this uh, category anything that you want up here in this, this area up here in the description. You can change that description to anything that you want. And you can set your prices. Your price in the blue box is per square inch. And it calculates out what that will be per square foot. And then your cleaning and sandblasting, 0.03. You'll notice that for, for um, uh, priming and painting the surfaces, let's say you're going to, to prime and paint uh, or clean and sandblast. I charge four cents per square inch to prime and paint a surface. That pays for the the uh, uh, the brushing, the degreasing, the the um, paint thinner that's needed to remove all of the oils and, and other things on the surface, then the prime primer coat and the time it takes to dry, maybe one or two coats plus the painted surfaces and all that, I charge four cents per square inch. Well, let's say this piece here, which is currently fifty six ten, I'm going to prime and paint it. Well, I'm going to make that. 0.04 per square inch and you'll notice that that brings the price up to $111 from 56 and that's because I'm going to prime and paint that surface and that's going to take time and, and energy and, and uh, materials and whatnot if I were going to powder coat the surface I would leave this at zero and the powder coating, uh, I would say it's 10 cents per square inch. So powder coating, I would change this to 0.1, and that would take the price to $193 for powder coating. Now, I've never done powder coating. Some of you that do it might say, Joe, that's a ridiculous price. Okay, maybe this powder coating should not be 10 cents per square inch. Maybe it should be 0.02 cents per square inch. I don't know what powder coating costs. But if I set it at 0.02, then you'll notice that the <clears throat> target price drops to $83.60. I'd probably charge $80 to the customer, just round it down. Because it makes it easier when you're bookkeeping. When you have a pile of receipts and you're there with a calculator, you want to enter 80, 70, 65, 62, 61, 65. You don't want to go 83.73 and 81.99 and 87. 40. You don't want to do that. It's just too much work. So round your prices down to round numbers. It makes bookkeeping a lot easier. All right. Well, when you're done with that, you can delete that design and you can grab another one. You can grab this dog if you were going to cut that out and you would copy it over here and do the same thing. You would draw a square around it, a rectangle around it, make it as tight as you can and go through the same process and put those numbers in to that spreadsheet over here in cells B6, 7, and 8 where they belong and make sure your price for your metal is correct over here and it will give you a target price to charge for that item. And I've compared my prices off of this spreadsheet to, to prices of things made in stores and sometimes they're a little high but you've got to remember you're doing custom. You're doing a one-off piece for somebody. Somebody says, I want a sign that says the Johnson, you know, the Johnson Ranch. Well, if Hobby Lobby would produce 10,000 of those, they could probably make them for a lot less money. But you're making one. 
for your customer, Mr. Johnson. And Mr. Johnson's got to understand that when it comes, comes to making a one-off custom sign, there's personal labor and time and energy and materials and uh, tools and overhead costs and everything else involved in producing that sign for Mr. Johnson. So he has to understand that that sign is going to cost a little bit more than he could pick up a thin, cheap Chinese, you know, made in China uh, sign at Hobby Lobby that might say Johnson on it, but it won't be what he wants. It won't have the design he wants. It may not have his Irish setter or his Labrador retriever built into the sign the way you would do it when you make a custom sign. So don't underestimate, uh, underestimate the value of your work. If you're cranking out a whole bunch of signs and say, boy, I'm selling signs every weekend, but you can't pay your rent, you're doing something wrong because you, you're, you're, not charging, <laughs> you're not charging enough to cover what it's costing you to make your products. So I'm not saying to, to you know, ream people, I'm not saying to overcharge, but you certainly want to cover your costs. And those costs include your shop overhead fee. Remember that air compressor is not going to last forever. That plasma cutter might die on you. How much is your plasma cutter? $2,500? If it dies on you, oh, well, I got to buy another one. Where's the money going to come from? It's going to come from this shop overhead fee that bring, brings in money, trickles money in a little bit for each piece that you make so that when your plasma cutter dies, you do have the money to replace it. Remember that I do offer free online one-on-one -on -one training, or uh, you can have more people at your site if you, if you want. It doesn't matter to me. Um, we link our computers together through Zoom or Google Meets, or um, there's a couple of different options for linking computers together. And I'll be happy to walk you through any issue with your Design Edge software uh, and help you learn something, or I'll just do some training with you. And I don't charge for that. It's um, Since we're all shut in for this COVID zombie apocalypse virus thing, I figure I might as well help people out online. And I don't charge for my time for doing that. I also do come out to personal locations. I can come to your home or business. Uh, I charge a rate of $500 per day for that. That covers all of my overhead expenses, which means wear and tear on my truck, fuel, hotel, food, um, all of the expenses of traveling, along with the expenses of maintaining my home in my absence. I have to pay people to monitor my alarms, collect my mail, mow my lawn, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's all expenses that come out of my pocket, and it's all paid out of that $500 daily fee. And believe me, if you think I'm getting rich on it, well, I'm barely breaking even when, when, uh, when I charge that rate. Most people hire me for three days. Some people will hire me for four or five to come out to your location. And that rate is uh, the same whether I'm traveling to somebody in Kentucky or whether I'm traveling to somebody in California. I still charge $500 per training day. And so that fee covers the cost of the eight-day trip back and forth across the country, too. You can understand where that comes from. Okay, I hope this video has helped you. Um, be sure to leave a comment if you like and uh, like the video and and um, um, communicate with me through this email address. Send me your name, address, phone number, the table, the software that you have, any upgrades that you have, and what it is you would like to have me get together with you to help you learn better or to improve your skills. And I'll be more than happy to do that. I hope this video has helped you.